Congratulations on being a probable winner of the international from Dax. How's it feel? Oh, over the moon. Fantastic feeling, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. First time ever in Britain, I reckon. Well, <laughs> <laughs> had to be, had to be done, didn't it? Yeah. Well, well done, mate. Can you tell me something about the race? What time did you clock in? I clocked in at um, seven oh oh thirty three seconds. Yeah, and that's on the day. On the Saturday, yes. On yeah, the, day, yes. Yeah. the pigeons went up at six, didn't they? Yes, they went up at six. In no wind. Tell us about the pigeon. What is he? But the pigeon is um, my old uh, distance family, which I've had for 25, 30 years. Yeah. In um, cross with a uh, uh, just fallen, the world champion, coming down out of a uh, son of sumo, yeah. which I purchased. Pers yeah. So what? What is your size? Down from one of your good pigeons, isn't he? Yes, he's, he's down from he's down from uh, Jingles, coming down from Jingles and Reggie. Um, both both big poor both big, big poor pigeons. Yeah. Reggie was um he was um, first section poor um, on the day, Southern Centre Classic. Um, and Jingles was a diploma merit winner for the Paul National. Yeah. What position did it win? It was six open. 34th, no, 35th open, 35th open, Paul. Yeah. 5,000 odd birds plus every time. Fantastic. What's your winner called? I'm going to call it the legend. The legend's a checker cock, Widowood. Checker cock, yes, Widowood, yes. Yeah. So, and what was his build up to the race? Build up was a race was, um, um, Port, Port and Bill, 50 miles. Um, Fornes, that's the Isle of Wight. We, put, we, give it, we, we give it a little try on the wharf there, uh, give him a, a little bit of experience, and then straight into Pickerville. Yeah. And he done, he had um, one, two, three Pickervilles. Then he went on to the Nance BBC, where he was second section. I ran about 30 or 40, I think. Yeah, brilliant pigeon, mate. And then a fortnight later, he went to the Saints National, um, and he scored six Open English. Saints National. Uh, I think it was fourth section. It's a class act, mate. And then onto the Dax International, where he uh, done the business. <laughs> <laughs> really done the business. This is Brian's international winner, the legend, a beautiful checker cock. And I say he's a class pigeon. Got plenty of good previous form. And he's got the reward of getting his end when he comes home great pigeon and I must say the pigeons come home what I've seen so far look in excellent condition Brian's now clocked three from Dax this pigeon on the day and two more one of which came when I was just coming down the garden a great performance by a good great fancier this is Brian's Woodward loft it's about 20 foot long, it's brick built, nice pan tiled roof, trapping through Sputniks, and it has a slatted floor. And it's all one section. This is the sea inside the Widow Loft. It houses about 25 cocks. This is a great old cock, Kevin. What's this one? This is Jingles, Brian's national diploma winner. Yeah. He's been three times in the first 35 from Paul. Yeah. What's his positions? Uh, third, 34th, and 32nd home. In the National Flying Club. Yeah. And he's the old family, isn't he? Yeah, he's Brian's old family. Where does he originate from? Um, Truman Dickens, Venner Pigeon. Yeah. Fantastic pigeon, he. Was he a natural pigeon? No, always Woodward. Yeah. He should have topped the West of England combine from Saints, but Brian missed him as a urine. It's a fantastic pigeon. He's, he's the grandson of the international winner. On the hen side. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. What system you race your old birds on him, Brian? Widow. Was it just Cox? Yeah, just Cox. How many? Oh, well, about 24 to 25 Cox. Yeah. Tell us about your system. When did you pair up? Well, um, uh, stock birds I pair up in November, very early November. Just in time to get the rings on the birds when we get. Yeah. How about the erasers? The erasers, I pair they up in December. Yeah, and will they have a youngster? They, they have a pair, all rear pair of youngsters, and uh, sitting a 
about six days. Yeah. So the mo they don't um, start flinging any flights. And then the hens are took away. Yeah. How about training? Training. Training commenced when I um, repair the birds around about May. Yeah. And do you train once they start racing? No. No training whatsoever. Just um, exercise around home. And if I think they need the flag, they get the flag. Do you repair for longer races? No. No. Never repair. No. I found, I have done in the past, but I found it to take the edge off the pigeons straight away. Yeah, how about feeding? Feeding, I've used Jerry Plus. Yeah, what's that? What's that, Widower Mix? That's a, that's a new, that's a new formulated with high, um, high carbure carbohydrate diet. The um, Versalar I've got out in this last two seasons. Yeah, do you, did you, I you break? It, I find it absolutely brilliant. Yeah, do you break down? No, no, no need to break down with that corn. No. Brian has a lovely set up here, and his young birds are kept in the roof of the garage. This has a Sputnik trap and a Pantile roof. And this is the scene inside the roof. Come on. Oh, youngsters look very cosy up here. I must say, Brian, your youngsters look nice and cosy up in that roof, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many do you breed each year? Well, I very rarely breed. At uh, the moment, I've got um, 50, I think it's 50 up there. Yeah. What system do you race them on? Well, I, I suppose you call it uh, the natural system. Yeah, do you put them in the dark? Well, they, I, but the, with the pairing up the stoppers early, there's no need to put the their youngsters on the darkness system. So, um, because, because it's dark nights. Because it's dark nights. Yeah. Uh, but, but the early, the early youngsters, uh, the the the, ra uh, out the, the the racers, I do because they're bred a little bit later. Yeah. So I what? take them off very early because, because I found that um, if you leave them on after Ju June, the, we say fourteenth, then they struggle a little bit with their moat at the end of the season. By t especially the young cocks, well, you don't want them to do that really. No. How far do you race them? I race them right through as far as I can. What? Yeah, most of your hens. Oh, always the hens. The cocks, are, the young cocks as well. They, 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 they the race, but um, but I always found that the young cocks don't race as well as the young hens. No. How far do you train them? Train them. When I start training, I give them every day 20, 25 mile. Yeah. What are they fed on? They're fed on Jerry Plus Two. Exactly the same as the widow cocks. Yeah. How many stock pigeons you keep? Oh, about I suppose about six pair. Yeah. And what's your main family? My main family is my, well. My main family was the old uh, the old Truman Dick and Venner pigeons. That's your old Poe family. That's my old Poe family. But then, you know, after a time, you do need a you do need a, a little bit of a cross. So I I thought, well, let's go to the Fountain's Head, the world champion, Josh Paul. Yeah. This is nice. Check a cup, Kevin. What's this one? This is the second Open Saints National this year. Yeah. And what is he? He's Broy's old family, bred down from Jingles, what? and the sire is um, uh, twice first in the first 25 from San Sebastian with the English National, and once in the first 20 with the Welsh Open National from San Sebastian. It's a beautiful cock this one, isn't he? Yep. Brian Shepherd, first Open, Bex International, 2003. And before I make the journey home, which is one last shot of the legend, the first pigeon ever to win the international in Great Britain. First national, first international Dax.